Hello everyone, Bridget Ayer here with All About the Grace and on this channel we talk about faith, culture, and media awareness and what the heck am I going to do for Lent? I don't know, but let's talk about that. Hello again, Bridget Ayer here with All About the Grace. And today we're going to talk about Lent. And if I'm recording this before Lent, but if you have, um, if Lent has already started and you haven't started anything or you, your Lent is not going well, I'm, but we're talking about Lent today. And I have actually 11 tips for you. Wondering these, um, this is my, this is my book, my new book. It's called Breaking New Ground, Discipleship Using New Media. You can get it on Amazon. Um, you can Google or just put hashtag all about the grace and you'll find my blog there. Okay, so here's my book. Um, uh, Catholic Radio Indy is going to be having a share real soon and my book is going to be the giveaway. So I have 80 signed copies here, so I'm really excited about that. Uh, but we're talking about Lent today, and I have actually 11 tips for you for Lent. So the first tip is something that you can consider is going to Eucharistic adoration. We're very blessed at the parish that I belong to. We have a perpetual adoration chapel, but I know that many parishes during Lent will have they'll bring out the Eucharist and the monstrance on the altar and have like an, a holy hour. And that's um, something that would be wonderful to try. There is actually a, at, at our Perpetual Adoration Chapel, they have a schedule and they have certain hours that are blocked off as we only have one adorer or we only have, we, we have no adorers. So I selected one of those blocks that didn't have an adorer. So I'm going to try, well, I'm going to try to go every Saturday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. And I told my husband to hold me accountable to that. Maybe I'll bring him with me and maybe my whole family. That would be great. Okay, so number one is try Eucharistic adoration on a regular basis, weekly, if you can, as one thing you can do for Lent. Number two. I have recently been um, made been made aware of this couple called uh, well the Messy Family Project. It's a ministry. I interviewed them on Catholic Radio Indy, and they are doing something called Cana Ninety. It's their Lenten program. I don't know anything about it. I signed up for it, and I'm going to do that. And and basically, their ministry is to equip families to be disciples and that's what i'm all about so i'm going to be trying that cana 90. you can go to the messyfamilyproject.com and uh, find out more about that okay number three smart goals smart goals for spiritual growth i actually did a short video on that and i'm going to go ahead and put the link in the description of this video but a SMART goal, S-M-A-R-T, goal is a methodology for setting goals in general. And if you want to take a look at that video, that will give you um, specific parameters on how to come up with a goal. And I just kind of applied that to doing a spiritual goal, which really in Lent you are trying to come up with some spiritual goals. So that might be a resource for you just to look at as you discern what God's calling you to do during Lent. Okay, number four, spiritual reading. Spiritual reading is a great thing to do all year long during your prayer time. And I actually, I actually have a couple books here that I'm going to suggest for spiritual reading that I um, have read that I think are really super good. Um, here's one, Who Am I to Judge by Dr. Edward Shree. You can get this um, on Ascension Press, I believe, or Amazon. Here's another really good one, Discovering God Together. 
and it's called the Catholic Guide to Raising Faithful Kids. So that's a good one for parents. And then here's one by Curtis Martin, Made for More. Actually, it's so funny. I, I don't know if I got water on this or spilled coffee on it, but it's definitely been used. But anyway, those are three books. Spiritual reading can really be any kind of spiritual book. Uh, usually it's not the Bible, but that's usually a separate category for my spiritual reading, but it certainly can be um, the Bible. Spiritual reading, you know, just spending a little bit of time every day reading a good spiritual book. So those are a couple ideas for spiritual books. Okay, the bravery, number five. Another idea for Lent is to pray. It's called the bravery. It's called Christian Prayer. It's also called Liturgy of the Hours. And you can get this, this book online, or not, not online, well you can probably, you could probably get, get it online too, but I mean you can get the app called I Breathe. And what's great about the app is that it's really super easy to use it just goes to the next day and it gives you all the prayers that you need to pray if you pray like what i would call the snail mail um liturgy of the hours it's it's a little bit more complicated i honestly don't the, though prefer the book because i'm always on line all the time or and this just is um this is a great this is christian prayer this is what all the priests and sisters pray but it's certainly open to lay people or any, any Christian can pray this. And really, it's um, a lot of the Psalms, uh, the Gospels, Old Testament, New Testament. It's, it's really great. So I try to pray that, but that's another idea. Another, another idea, number six, is this is one of my favorite spiritual growth tools. I've talked about it before. It's called One Bread, One Body. It's put out by Presentation Ministries. What's great about this is that every day it has the mass readings and then a reflection on the mass readings. And honestly, it only takes you about a minute to read the reflection. Um, so getting back to One Bread, One Body, this is has the daily mass reading. So if you go to mass, you're going to hear the mass readings of of the day that you read them and what's a good way a good way to pray with this is that it has the mass readings listed at the top you go read the, the mass readings and then you read the reflection so and then you then the whole idea of this is really to prepare you for daily mass um, it's not a substitute for daily mass but it is a, a tool to prepare you for daily mass okay that was one bread one body Another idea is to listen to Catholic Radio Indy, um, catholicradioindy.org. If you're in the Indianapolis media market, it's 89.1 FM or 90.9 FM, and that's 24-7 wall-to-wall Catholic programming. All right, that was Catholic Radio Indy, catholicradioindy.org. Um, they stream live on the internet. You can get their podcast. Just go to Catholic Radio Indy and then go to their podcast. But really, uh, Catholic Radio Indy is an EWTN affiliate in the Indianapolis media market. And it's such a great way to learn about your faith. There's so many really, really good shows. Catholic Radio Indy, we produce four or five local shows. I think we're only at four shows right now. We've got the Catholic Cave. We've got Faith in Action, which is a show I co-host. We have Catholic Jukebox, and then we have Catholic Sports Weekly. So those are four locally produced shows, but the rest of the shows are EWTN syndicated shows, which are all really super awesome. Um, so Catholic Radio Indy is another thing that you can do for Lent. Just tune in whenever, 24-7. Okay, number nine. Here's a really easy one. Five minutes of silence a day. Just five minutes of silence. Do nothing but have quiet. Close your eyes. Just carve out that time every morning before you start your day. 
to be present to God. And that's a really simple one. And then another one is five minutes of scripture reading. That's another one you could do. So five minutes of, of silence is one, but another one would be five minutes of scripture reading. So just you start your day, you open up scripture, you read for five minutes, and then you go on with your day. That's just something really super simple that you could do. And then another, the last one, which is number 11. This is a really great resource that I like. This is also from Presentation Ministries. And I think it's actually 40 days. Hang on just a second. It's right around 40 days to go through this. Anyway, um, number 11 is Who Am I in Christ? You can get this online for free. Um, or you can send away for the booklet. This is Presentation Ministries dot com presentationministries.com and all their publications are free but they ask for a free will donation so this is just a really good resource to grow in your faith and to grow in your relationship with God and this would be a great uh, spiritual exercise to do during Lent and I believe it does take about let me look here real quick. I think it does take about about 40 days to do this. It might be a little bit longer than that, but it's definitely worth it. And that's another, another idea. So that's it. Those are my 11 tips for Lent. I hope that you have a great Lent. And if you're not having a great Lent or you haven't thought about what you want to do for Lent, or maybe this isn't even the season of Lent when you watch this, these are all uh, great ideas for you to grow in your faith any time of the year. Um, and I wish you a happy Lent. And if you haven't uh, subscribed, please click subscribe below. It helps me out. I don't have to push these out, though I do try to push them out on social media. Um, it just helps me save time and then I can produce more videos. So thanks so much. God bless. See you next time.